Microsoft's definitely trying to take their knife out and come after startups at the moment. <laughs> a lot of these agents really are people are doing whole startups that just do this one thing. Microsoft being a sort of startup killer. Big event, right? Big announcements. Um, I really kind of feel that this announcement is probably one of the first ones that we're seeing where one of the big tech companies is actually saying, hey, agents have arrived, right? Agents are here. Uh, we're, we're actually getting customers to use them in the real world. They're actually doing real world tasks. They're doing, you know, all this kind of thing. I think that's sort of like my big takeaway from Satya's sort of uh, keynote at I think it's sort of like really interesting where they're going with that. You know, your interview with Charles, again, was sort of really reinforcing that, yeah, this is no longer sort of just proof of concepts. This is no longer just sort of like small little tests. This is now big companies coming along and saying, hey, we want to achieve this outcome. How do we do it with an agent? And more like one of the things I thought was a really good takeaway from your interview with him was that how the the sort of mainstream companies perhaps don't really care that much about the model. Like we've gone through two years of everyone talking about, hey, who's got the best model, which org's got the best model, that kind of thing. At the end of the day, it's not the model that it, you know is going to be the most important thing for the customer. It's the result that they're going to get with the agent. So uh, yeah, what, I'd love to hear what, what you thought. What, what do you think? Well, you know, starting out on the model, I, th I think you're exactly right. I thought it was really interesting that Charles decoupled value from the model in that interview I did with him, right? This, I, I was asking clearly, where, you know, where is the value in the model going forward? And, and he, he was saying, hey, take a look at how we're charging for these agents. Yeah, that was really on interesting. price per message, right? And it's, yes. it's not on raw compute. And Matt, you're, you're starting to see this trend across the industry where the value is almost in the level above the model, right? All that enterprise stuff, you're getting back to your main point, the takeaways, right? That enterprise stuff that's above the model that I think most people don't really recognize is that OpenAI's value um, for, you know, is, is really not really in the model itself as much as all the cool stuff in that API that it's delivering around it, right? And I think Microsoft seeing and, and getting ahead in these, in, in these, because it's so active in the enterprise, uh, really strong on these things like a, a layer of governance that includes things like privacy and, and checking for you know, sec safety of, of that LLM response, right? Security, because they have to do this for all their, these other applications. So I think that enterprise ready is the first point. I think the second point is this vision around the mesh, right? That Charles is very eloquent on is that he thinks all companies are going to have millions of these things. Has it been built out, this vision? No, right? And I think we're going to get into that, right? These these applications they have are just like super discrete and that's kind of maybe doing two or three things. And there's 10 agents so far that they're delivering, but we'll get into that. And then the third thing is, you know, the competition though, I would go out and say they're ahead, right? I, You know, there's part of me that says, you know, how substantive is that lead, right? right? Questions, you know, because they, they've been throwing Copilot as an assistant on top of their, all their apps and you've got, you know, Benioff from Salesforce poo-pooing on it and saying this stuff is being rejected by companies and, you know, a lot of folks complaining about right. maybe the quality of it. But it's, uh, w w when you actually look at what they're doing, I think they are ahead because of that reach. The fact that you've got hundreds of millions of people using the, those productivity tools and Microsoft can go in and say to these companies that are or orchestra or, or delivering these applications for these millions of people, hey, take an agent, go do stuff more efficiently. And, and I, they are ahead. I, I do think, yeah, like I think the big thing uh, is that they have realized that the price of tokens is just going down massively. So they've got to reposition how they're going to charge for this. So the per message thing I think is really interesting. I do wonder if we end up actually getting like a per task kind of pricing where, you know, like an agent does something, okay, that costs me 35 cents or, you know, that kind of thing, as opposed to like, just sort of like uh, a, a chat with it or something. One of the other things that I think is really interesting is how they're now starting to position Copilot, which just, you know, it just sort of launched a year ago or so. I, back then it was really sort of focused much more on a chat interface. 
And now they're sort of setting up these copilot actions uh, and these things that can be triggered with copilot so that these agents can sort of kick off and do something. And you've got to think that if it's just per message, I, I wonder even if eventually that goes away and it's kind of like, okay, this task gets done for this price or something like that. But, but it's a huge start just to get away from tokens. Um, you, could, you could definitely sort of see that th this now is we've gone up a level, an, an abstraction above, which you know, creates more, more value. Totally agree with what you said about the, in, the enterprise stuff. So one of the things that I thought was really interesting uh, that both Charles said and that they talked about it at Ignite today was this whole idea of third-party integrations. And I guess this is where Microsoft has got a huge advantage over a lot of the other tech companies in that they've already been working with these companies for a long time. They already sort of know what their API stack is like. They know how to integrate their apps into it, that kind of thing. And I think like for them, it, it, you know, for Microsoft, it's really just about creating these agents that can sort of take you take advantage of all this work that they've built out over a long period of time. So the big thing I think, you know, is that just they've got a good sense of what customers want. Um, one of the things I thought was really interesting, we can maybe come back to is like these 10 agents that they've rolled out in sort of Dynamics 365. But it's really interesting looking at those 10 agents and that each one of them is basically a startup, right? We're seeing, you know, sort of going, going around meetups in, in SF and talking to people, what are you building? We're seeing people build vertical agents that do these things. And Microsoft has just gone, right, you want this kind of thing? Here's 10 of them, right? Uh, and, and we're just dropping it kind of thing. Uh, so I think this is, this is a huge thing going forward. I, I'm wondering what this means for OpenAI. So OpenAI clearly was leading the agenda last year, right? And then coming into this year with the, the large language model race uh, and, and the quality, it's always been at the top of most of the rankings, the benchmarks. Is this a turn where we've, we've again, decoupled the conversation from the large language model and all of a sudden we're seeing OpenAI in the back view mirror Right? It, am, am I going out too too far on a limb here to say that 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 maybe they they've lost the lead in terms of the the race for the enterprise and they become a consumer play? And then the question is, what sort of distribution they have? Right? Because Microsoft has these you know hundreds of millions of of of, of folks that they're serving. A lot of other companies do too. Right? Whether you're talking about SAP or ServiceNow, these Oracle in terms of in the enterprise. Um, what do you what do you what do you think of that real quick? I I kind of feel like, it, I think it's in some ways it's too early to tell. It's really going to come down to, you know, whenever OpenAI drops their next big model, uh, and it, you know, if that's going to be the O1 model that we're expecting in the next couple of weeks, or whether that's going to be the GPT-5 slash Orion model, or whatever. If the quality of that model holds true to what Sam Altman's been saying, He's been saying that these agents are going to basically, once you've got a better model, they're all going to suddenly work a lot easier. Now, one of the things that I, I kind of take away from the Microsoft Ignite event is that up until very recently, people were talking about that, like, ah, these agent stuff is a really good idea, but it doesn't work in production. Like, it only works maybe 70% of the time, so therefore we can't trust it enough. Now, it does seem that, Microsoft's kind of worked out some things that they can get to work really well. The big thing is going to be if OpenAI drops a model that can suddenly do a lot of things really well. Uh, and, you know, like we, we, uh, we've we talked about in the past, the whole Magentic One uh, framework and, and the Magentic One agent that Microsoft Research has been doing, that's geared much more to a generalist kind of agent. So the idea is there that if you've got a really good model, that becomes really, uh, you know, a lot more powerful. So I wouldn't rule OpenAI out yet. I, I think like they're going to have their own take on it. I, the, you know, the, for me, one of the big sort of things that we saw that both Charles talked about and again that they talked about at Ignite was this whole idea of sort of, you know, autonomous or automated kind of RPA, right? So the whole uh, RPA was huge. You know, everyone got really excited about it sort of six, seven, eight years ago. Uh, UiPath sort of came out, raised a massive amount of money. 
uh, IPO did a huge valuation and basically tanked from there on. Uh, and you've got to think that Microsoft's now going, hang on a minute, we can actually just do that business model, but we can do it right with these kind of models. And they're going to need better models over time. So OpenAI, if Microsoft doesn't come up with those models themselves, you've really only got like OpenAI, Anthropic, Google. Chances of them using Google probably pretty small. Anthropic seems to be, you know, in bed with Google and AWS, not so much with Microsoft. Uh, so OpenAI is still their guy, right? <laughs> at least, uh, at yeah. least it's looking like that. Yeah, I, absolutely. And I, and I think, again, in the conversation with Charles, he made it clear that the default agent looks to be 90% of the time the 4.0 model. But really the orchestration idea needs a powerful model. And if, if it's going to get, if the agent's going to get better, it's going to need an even more powerful model than what's out there now. 4.0 is not going to cut it for, you know, doing a lot of this sort of stuff. And I think this is where OpenAI really is going to have to sort of put up or shut up at some point, right? They really have to release either the GPT-5 or whatever they're going to call that kind of model. I or they're going to have to, you know, uh, uh, try and do something themselves with this to show people. And and the question is, I guess the the other question in regards to OpenAI is how much does OpenAI actually want to do this? So if their real, you know, if their real goal is AGI, then they're kind of, you know, going to be focused on that. If their goal is to make money, then they're going to be trying to compete with Microsoft on building the best agent system or something rather than building the best models to get them to AGI. I think in many ways, this is going to be a telling moment. Right? I think that's going to be really interesting. As we're recording this now, you know, the, the we're talking about the models thing. There's been a really interesting model that's just dropped this deep seek reasoning model, uh, you know, this R1 uh, model. So this is a startup that is finding that, you know, they can make some models, do things apparently that are kind of similar to what uh, OpenAI's reasoning models are doing. So we may end up finding that like, you know, a lot of the, uh, a lot of what we think Microsoft, uh, sorry, a lot of what we think OpenAI had a huge advantage, maybe is not as strong an advantage as we kind of thought.